Hello and welcome. If you're new here, we're Aramis and Emily, a UK-based couple with a love of the outdoors. We bought this Ford Transit panel van with the intention to convert it into our ultimate adventure van for our trips across the UK and abroad. After 12 months of hard work on the weekends, we are starting to get closer and closer to the finish line. If you missed last week's episode, we finally fitted our sink, sorted the plumbing and installed the tap. Whilst all was going well, I ruined our worktop. Disaster. This week, our goal is to finish the overhead storage shelf and make a start on building the cupboards over the kitchen unit and bench. So come and join us as we navigate our way through the next part of our build. Good morning. It's a very sunny Sunday. It's been a week since we last been here. Well, we finished. Oh. We made the frame for the overhead shelf. So we need to make a door. This time, we're not going to do the same mistake. We're going to paint it before we fit it. And once that's done, we need to start building the cupboards, which I think is going to be a bit tricky, but I think we're going to manage it. We need to try and make it outside that we can paint it, yeah. clap everything, and then we just can just take it, it and place. fix it. Yeah. yeah. Last weekend, before we left, we put another coat of varnish because if you remember, we had some issues. It came out much nicer, but there was a lot it's, of dust particles yeah. that kind of got stuck under the actual varnish but yeah uh, i mean i'm happy how it turns out anyway even if it has these dots we're gonna be cooking it's not gonna be completely bare all the time it's no. really not it's frustrating because it was at a nice finish but you know it's just one of those it's things it's still nice it's a learning curve mm -hmm. so the plan is that we're gonna use the same bit that we cut it out for the door so that's gonna go in there we'll be on hinges at the top and we're thinking to paint the, the outside green and the door green and put these. We had uh, some uh, leftover slats. So we're just gonna use the same slats to use for a frame. So we're just gonna make a frame around the door. And that hopefully should look all right. So I'm just gonna take it off again now. Prime it, paint it and refit it again. Now the worktop is dry again, Aramis was able to fit the tap and finish the piping. Whilst he was doing that, I started to paint the overhead shelf face. It's so much easier to paint this outside of the van. I am somebody that gets paint everywhere. I get a little bit like slapdash with it, so this is much better. Aramis then had a look at the plumbing whilst I slapped the first coat of paint on. Right, trim the holes a bit, uh, tidy up the wiring a bit. So all this pump wiring is not like dangling leads, so I just wrapped it around the hose. Touch the power supply wire to the side. At the moment, this is our waste tank. I think we're gonna change it to something different because I think I mentioned before that we had smaller one ordered, but yeah, it arrived damaged. So we need to replace this one because we want a bit more space for a bin here. Because at the moment, there's literally no space at all left. But yeah, everything's working fine. And there's no leaks. So after a few coats of paint were dry, Aramis was able to fit the main face of the shelf cover on. Once fitted, we couldn't do much more as the door frame varnish needed to dry. So we started to do the measurements for the cupboards. We came across with this difficulty, how to get the straight line. Because nothing's straight here. Yeah? The front of the van is just going a bit in and the ceiling is also going down. So to get the nice flush and straight finish, we needed to come up with something like this. You probably can't you even, even see, see it. it. There's a little tiny bit of fishing wire. Yeah. But we're going to have it like, have what, 25 Five? centimeters down. And obviously the depth is going to be different because as we said, the walls are going in. So we placed this beautiful plank. There was a reason we kept that. Then we attached a, a string that's gonna give us like a line where we can work from and scribe the side bits. And then we're gonna build the frame and we're gonna just box this frame outside. We're gonna bring it in and just fix it's it. it. Okay. So that's the plan, but we'll see how it Gonna go. We managed to get a straight and level line and from there we were able to scribe the end piece template onto the cardboard. 
Then it was time to build the frame for the first set of cupboards. Once measured, scribed and cut, we fixed all the pieces we had made together to ensure everything aligned correctly. And after a long day, we left it there. Right, it's getting late. It's nearly half past five. Emily's hungry. That's where we are with the shelf. Just gonna test fit it now. Is that good? Oh yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's, oh, there's no gaps at all. There's no gaps. And we're done for today. I'm not actually here tomorrow, so Amrus has got a day off, so he's going to come down and do a bit more work tomorrow whilst I'm at work. So for me, it'd be quite nice to see next weekend for what you've managed to get done tomorrow. Mm. So bye from me, but you'll see this one yeah, tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. So good morning. I have a day off, so I thought I'm going to spend the day working on a van. Yesterday, we haven't finished uh, the overhead shelf, so I think that's going to be my first job of today. Uh, I'm going to fit this door. Probably going to use a wood filler to fill up all these screws, and then I just need to finish this cupboard. So that's going to be our door. We're gonna use these. Yesterday we varnished them, so it took a while to dry out. So we couldn't finish it yesterday, but today everything's nice and dry. So we can fix everything in place now. So he fixed the pre-made slats on with screws just to make sure they don't fall off. Let's try and fit it. Then he fitted the hinges, which we had left over from the bench lids. A bit of sanding was required to get the door to close properly. On to painting, Amos decided to go for a black inner door, which actually looked pretty cool. Look at him making decisions without me. A little update. So I finished that uh, overhead shelf door. Paint is dry, I painted inside black, fill up these screw holes. Whilst I was doing that, I, I thought I'm gonna touch touch up the actual kitchen unit as well. Other thing, some more paint arrived. So uh, I was able to actually finally finish that corner that was primed. So that paint is drying now, it should be all good. Now I'm just carried on with actual cupboard. Just trying to figure out where's the middle section is going to be because uh, that's mainly going to be where the actual mounting point is going to be. And this line there, there's a uh, wooden batten, same like in that corner. So that's mainly going to be our fixing points. A lot of measuring and a lot of cutting. Carrying on with the cupboard structure, Aramis placed battens for strength and to be able to fix it onto the wall. A little test fit was required to make sure nothing needed changing. Right. Everything's nice and flush. Beautiful. Fitment good, the front face was scribed and cut using the built cupboard for accuracy. All components painted, he fitted it into place ready to be installed into the van. And I think that should be it. Well, it took really long time. And now we need to make another one on that side. Now we've got some experience doing this one. So hopefully another one's gonna be much quicker. So, plan of action. For today. We finish the overhead cupboards, like the main body of them, and then I see once that's done that can be painted and then we'll try and start from the dry side and get the door fronts on. So let's get cracking. So I got busy with painting under the cupboards where the wood filler had gone in and been sanded down. And whilst the paint was drying, we made a start on the frame for the other overhead cupboard. This was quite straightforward as we simply repeated the process all over again. We have just spent the last couple of hours 
couple of hours um, building the mainframe for the second row of cupboards. So this is what we have at the moment. And then I assume we're going to do the same as the other one and we're going to sort of box in the side, yeah, so box in the middle and box in the other side. So we've got sort of like two separate compartments for the cupboard. Yeah, so we're going to box it up, paint everything before fitting. 15 mm. minutes till the paint's touch dry. Yeah. And then we'll show you what it looks like when it's erected. Now the frame is made, we cut the bottom piece from the ply and then went on to cut the end pieces and the central divider. And once it was all boxed in, we slapped a coat of black paint on. Oh, edgy. So, saving you from the trauma of watching paint dry, fast forward to fixing it to the wall. It is a year to the date that we bought Flossy. So, obviously once the van build is complete, we would like to do sort of like a before and after, a bit of a um, mini van tour um, for those that would be interested. But just for context, if you've been following along, you will know roughly what the van looks like currently. I think we should put some photos in now, just of the very very basic how she looked at the very beginning before we taken out the floor before we took out the walls and the bulkhead just for like a comparison of how far we've come in a year now i know a lot of people would be like a year's a really long time and in the grand scheme of things yeah okay it's quite a long time to convert a van and still not be done yet but we bought her in the june we didn't finish rebuilding her engine until the october so really we've only had since october to now to convert and considering this is our first time doing so i'm not mad about it you know we are really nearly there now everything we're doing currently is just not the necessities but the things that we want so obviously the cupboards are a little bit more of a need because obviously we need storage for clothes and whatever else but really then all we've got to do is cover the foam and um, we've just got to actually get that done which is the bit that i'm a bit like Ooh. see what my sewing skills are like see what Amos's sewing skills are like maybe turn it into a little challenge maybe but yeah aside from that i think we are pretty pretty set so yeah really happy with how she's coming along i think Amos has done an amazing job sort of putting his ideas into action because I'm telling you now this build would not have happened without him um, he takes in a lot of information he learns a lot and I just think it's amazing really what he's achieved with all of this with a little bit of my help first job of the day sort this out it's all nice and dry now so but the filler yep yeah, it's nice and dry so we'll sand that back give that another lick of paint and then it's time to put the door fronts on all of them apart from this one this is just a little shelf let's get started we sanded down the wood filler and gave it one last coat of paint so it all blends in nicely the paint was drying so we moved on to cutting our doors measurements noted down we drew our template onto the ply ready to cut once cut we went in for a test fit any guesses how well it went? All right, let's start from here. First door done, lovely jubbly. No. Absolutely perfect no. fit. Okay. <laughs> so, so we decided to use these fro front, frog hinges, frog I think hinges they're called, yeah. that they are like 90 degree hinges that should just open up nicely. They are so shit and weird. <laughs> what the hell is that? Like when you open it up inside, they're fitted in the right place. Yeah, they're okay. They don't have all the screws on, but they're both in the identical positions cupboard is like flush the whole way along and then you just <laughs> wonky I don't understand what's happened it's flush when it's up but completely skew if when it's down so we need to rethink that third time lucky and we've got it as level as we possibly can so what we were doing is we were putting the hinges too far like yeah, like we were connecting we were edge to edge. Yeah, we were putting this edge of the wood to this edge of the wood, and I'd, I think it was just giving it too much movement. So actually, we have to move these pieces back to give this as much tension as possible. I think uh, if I remember this, on uh, when I bought them, there was instructions how to fit them, and there was like three options. Yeah, for three, different. You can use the frog in just three different ways. I completely forgot which way is which way. Mm. I'm like, so yeah, we're just gonna mark the drill holes now. Take this off. Do the next one and then get them both painted. After a few attempts, the doors were cut and it was time to sand them down and paint them. 
It took us some time to fit the doors into place, but once it was done, we fitted a handle to each door and then repeated the same process on the other set of cupboards. And after two full days of graft, the overhead cupboards were complete. Sorry, but did we just purchase a kitchen from IKEA or build one ourselves? You can barely tell the difference. So after a weekend dedicated to building cupboards, we finally got it finished. We are super happy with the progress we have made, although did find a few things that may need some adjustments. Come back next time as we continue our build and step ever closer to the finish line. Thank you so much for watching. We have loved every minute of sharing our build journey with you all. The continuous support and messages of encouragement are really helping us push these final few weekends of hard graft. See you next time. Bye.